welcome, welcome back to the Citizen Channel. Hope you're all staying safe and well. And the first of a three-parter today as we look back at the time of Raheem Sterling at Manchester City, of course. 215 to 222. As I'm recording this, he's supposed to have gone, but he's had a medical, but we've not seen anything official from Chelsea yet. But I've seen him in Chelsea top, so I assume he's gone. So I'm doing I'm doing this vlog anyway. It's took about four days to do the research on it. We're still no nearer, but I'm sure by the time you're watching this, it'll all be out in the open. Right, let's have a look at Rakim. Rakim Shaquille Sterling, MBE. Born the 8th of December 1994. And in part one, we're going to have a look at uh, 2015 to 2018. Uh, from entertainer to top of the league. That's what we subtitled this one. Born in the Maverley district of Kingston, Jamaica, uh, to Jamaican parents, still he moved to London at the age of five. In July 2015, following a lengthy dispute over a new contract, he was signed by Manchester City, of course, seeing a potentially deal worth 49 million, the highest ever transfer fee paid for an English player at this time. I think we've done better than that since, haven't we? Going back to his previous things, he'd signed for Queen's Park Rangers at the young age of 10 as a winger, and he was subsequently scouted by the academies of City, of course, but also Arsenal, Chelsea, Fulham and Liverpool, and he was encouraged by his mother not to choose clubs in the locality, in other words, London, to escape the hostile gang culture. 2015-16, his record-breaking transfer and debut season, of course, for City. And on the 12th of July 2015, a deal was agreed for his transfer to City for an initial £44 million with a further potential £5 million add-ons, making him the most expensive, as we've said. On 14th of July, still in officially joined City under Manuel Pellegrini, of course, signing a five-year contract and wore the number seven shirt, or picked the number seven shirt. He said, the only promise I make is that I will try my best at all times to create and score as many goals as I can for the team and work really hard every week. That's all we ever ask. That's all we can ever ask from a player. His debut came on the 10th of August. As City began the season with a 3-0 win away to West Bromwich Albion. He made his Etihad debut on the 16th of August. The 3-0 win over reigning champions Chelsea. That was a good win, wasn't it? Already a good link-up with David Silva was, was there to be seen. Uh, that was very evident. On the 29th of August, Sterling scored his first competitive goal for City in a 2-0 win against Watford at the Etihad. And he made his Champions League debut against Juventus on the 15th of September. On the 22nd of September, 4-1 away win at Sunderland. He got his first League Cup goal. Yes, wouldn't be his last. Still, he scored his first career hat-trick. Yes, a threesome. The City beat Bournemouth 5-1 on the 17th of October. All the goals come in the first half as we took a 4-1 interval lead. His first UEFA Champions League goal came on the 3rd of November in the 3-1 win away at Seville. On the 21st of November, things didn't go quite well for Raheem in his first rematch with his old employer's Liverpool in a 4-1 defeat at the Etihad. That was a rubbishy day. And this, this sadly, was to be... It did have the odd OK game against Liverpool, but sadly, that was to be his theme during his stables against his old his old club, Liverpool. He just didn't quite do it, unfortunately. On the 8th of December, he scored twice on his 21st birthday. Happy birthday, Sterling. In the final 10 minutes of City's last group stage fixture against Borussia Mönchengladbach, which helped turn a 2-1 deficit into a 4-2 win. And it ensured we overtook Juventus in the final group standings. That's it. Left that one late, didn't we? Raheem scored his first FA Cup goal on the 30th of January 2016, a 4-0 win at Villa Park. His second matchup with Liverpool went a bit better, slightly, though he had a quiet game. City lifted the Capital One Cup, of course, beating Liverpool on penalties on the 28th of February. On the 20th of March 2016, he suffered a groin injury and a 1-0 loss to, yes, those lot across the road, Manchester United, going off on after only 26 minutes, replaced by Fernando, who was then he was actually ruled out for eight weeks after that. Eight weeks of Fernando. Well, I don't think I don't think we got that long of Fernando. I think that was how long he stood there. He stayed with us, wasn't it? He returned as a sub on the 19th of April in a 1-1 draw with Newcastle. And a bit like City's, his season sort of fizzled out, uh, being a brought on sub in both legs of the Real Madrid Champions League semi-final. Well, let's face it, City wimped out 1-0 on aggregate in that one. Damien Duffy summed up Sterling's season in King of the Kipax 2-3-4. He said, in my view, unfairly criticised by some sections of the crowd, he looks like a man unsure what to do. Nothing changes, does it? If he does what comes naturally, he can be a match winner as his pace rolls defenders and creates havoc. Havoc, as we have seen twice against Everton, as well as at Seville and Kiev. 
However, too often he comes back inside and plays the easy ball like he's scared of doing the wrong thing or giving it away. But would it be too much of a leap of faith to try the right-footed Raheem actually on the right side of the pitch? Probably. Um, <laughs> you know, the position where he excelled at Liverpool. At the risk of making a complete fool of myself, I can see Sterling developing under Guardiola into a player of similar style, if not the same quality, to someone like Iron Robin. There we go, Iron Robin. Not a bad comparison. His season stats, obviously, the honours for City that season, just the Capital One Cup. Uh, qualifications for the Champions League, of course, finishing third that season. In the in the league, his personal stats, played 20, uh, 23 games, eight he came on a substitute, six goals. Not OK, a couple of assists, two assists. And in the Cups, 11 games, four a substitute, five goals and eight assists. So, OK, OK, it wasn't staggering, it was OK. On to the 16-17 season, of course, the close season brought what would become the norm as a large part of the media had a bit of a vendetta against him, didn't he? Which was going to be in and out for the rest of his certainly time at City. Some of it even Mike Summer was even moved to put forward his support for him in the opening match of the season with the, in the Sunderland program. With his notes in the buzzword column, and was sure Raheem on the pitch would come on leaps and bounds under Pep. Although still he struggled to be in the starting lineup after injury at the tail end of last season, he would appear regularly for City under new manager Pep for the opening of the 2016-17 season. He was the Premier League Player of the Month for August, so he made a good start in 2016 after scoring his first two goals of the season, a 3-1 home win over West Ham on the 28th of August. He hit three goals in three games in September, the last in a 3-3 draw up in Glasgow. Remember that? What a game that was against Celtic. But then despite being a regular until early December, no more goals. He was temporarily out of the squad and then managed to get back on the score sheet in a 2-1 win over Arsenal a week before Christmas. On Sunday the 15th of January, an awful 4-0 loss on Merseyside to Everton. He made his 50th Premier League appearance, but one we all sort of prefer to forget. That was, a, that was probably one of Pep's low points of that first season as we and Pep struggled. Despite Sterling going the 5-3 win over Monaco, uh, of course, disappointedly, we got we go out on aggregate in the round 16 of the Champions League. He came on a sub in the 23rd minute for an, un, an injured David Silva at Wembley in the FA Cup semi-final. Uh, and that was a defeat to Arsenal. But like the season before, everything was sort of fizzling out for an undercooked Sterling and City. And he sat out the last two games of the season on the bench. So what achievements that year? Well, all we had to, to answer on Pep's first season was Champions League, Champions League qualification. Even that looked in doubt at one stage, so we're happy with that in third spot. His personal stats in the league, 29 appearances, four as sub, seven goals and 10 assists. That's 17 goals and assists. 29 games plus four a sub, that's not bad. Cups, 11 games, two a sub, three goals and eight assists. Again, uh, not a bad return. Uh, 11 assists and goals uh, in 11, get for 11 full starts. On to 17-18. After being a late sub in a 2-0 win in the opening game at Brighton, he came on at half-time at home to Everton and scored in a 1-1 draw on the 21st of August. And on the 26th of August, he scored his second of the season and the winner, of course. And I think I think things changed with City fans too, and just a little bit with this one. A 2-1 away went to Bournemouth, of course. He scored in the 97th minute. He was sent off for the first and only time in Sky Blue by Mike Dean for that, for a second yellow after he celebrated, of course, amongst the tra travelling supporters. Refs have to do it, but it's a bit unfair, isn't it? And, of course, the fans were on the pitch and he took his shirt off and he got sent off for a second bookable offence. So we had to play on with 10 men, fortunately, not for very long. On the 29th of November 2017, Steelers scored yet another late, important 96-minute winner against Southampton. I remember that, that we were up for that one, but a lot of people had left. Left, a 2-1 home win. His 10th goal in 14 starts. This was this was this was the Raheem we wanted, wasn't it? But a couple off the bench as Ian City, yeah, were both on fire. In December, commencing on his scoring, commenting on his scoring, Sterling said, I'm just trying to get in the box and more, more and my time I runs better. I'm trying to be more ruthless, more clinical. Goals are often what you're judged on. So I said to myself, I need to get better at this, and that's what I'm trying to do. On the 23rd of December, Bournemouth must have hated him. Yeah, he had a good record against Bournemouth. They must have hated facing City, and in particular, in particular Sterling, who scored his seventh goal in five games against them in a 4 0 win. A hamstring injury suffered in Basel kept him out of the 1-0 FA Cup loss to Wigan. He was, he was lucky, wasn't he, not having to suffer that. And he also missed the Carabao Cup win against Arsenal. 
A City went out of the Champions League at the hands of Liverpool. He would at least get on the score sheet at home. Yeah, he gave us hope, didn't he, when we, he put us one up very early on. Uh, of course, that second, second minute strike, wasn't it? Plenty of time to get three goals, wasn't there? But unfortunately not. With the league almost tied up by early April, at least we're doing well in there. And a wonderful 100 points obtained by the champion win, champion winning season end. He will score four goals in his last six games of the season. And yes, we'll go over again for King of the Kipax, issue 252. And John John Burfield was waxing lyrical about Raheem. That's what he says. This was his best season of Sky Blue shirt by a country mile. It was only second one. Busy moving the ball quickly, tenacious, stretching play, scoring goals, working the angles with Dave and Kev very nicely. There is still room for improvement, of course. No one's denying it. His one-on-one finishing and general composure went through on the opposition keeper remain obstinately poor his first touch can be haphazard and his decision making can be seen to be to worsen in direct correlation to the amount of time he has available same problem i.e. the more times he has to play with the bigger the balls up he makes likely or he's likely to make but if you can't see the good things he brings to the party as well then you can't be helped good point as things stand currently the boy has two years left on his contract rumour has it that his agent is making noises about pay parity with De Bruyne and Aguero certainly wouldn't have been a surprise at that point in time Invaluable asset though he has become at City and unquestionably deserving of some manner of wage increase. What the World Cup perhaps did demonstrate, and we're only at the quarter final stage as I write this, is that when not surrounded by the kind of creative players he shares a field with at the Etihad each week, Raheem is not someone who can make enough happen for himself to be ranked in the very top bracket. Fingers crossed the deal can be thrashed out though, because he unquestionably adds to our potency, and there's no player I want to see to see Rami's critics' words back down their throats more. And you give him give him an eight out of ten. That was fair enough, wasn't it? So the Premier League and the Carabao Cup, uh, yes, a double we've come very good at that, isn't it? And the first team ever, of course, to get one hundred points in the Premier League season. Personally, uh, his stats very, very good, uh, excellent. Uh, league twenty nine appearances, four as sub, eighteen goals and fifteen assists. Unbelievable stuff. Cups, 10 appearances, 3 a sub, 5 goals, 2 assists. Again, excellent. So please join me in part 2. Yeah, can things get better? They certainly can. As things get better for Raheem and certainly get better for City. So please, hope you enjoyed that, guys. Let me know your memories as well. And uh, tune back in for part 2 as and when you can. Thanks for thanks for watching. So we meet again. Oh, that's one thing, don't we? Please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.